season replays, fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if tournaments. It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach, DKM. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK with Coffee Cup Games. Hope you guys are having a good one. We're going back to a series that we've been doing on and off here at Coffee Cup Games, a series that we call The Originals. These are replay of games that have historical significance throughout Major League Baseball history. We started in 1871 with the very first professional baseball game. We then went to 1876 and we replayed the very first National League game. Then we went to 1882 and replayed the very first American Association game. And then we went to 1884 and we replayed the very first Union Association game. So now we are here and we're going to be replaying another very first event that occurred in Major League Baseball history. And that very first event is none other than the very first time an African-American debuted in Major League Baseball history. And that occurred on May 1st in 1884 when Moses Fleetwood Walker of the Toledo Blue Stockings went and played against the Louisville Eclipse. For those historians out there, you may think it is William Edward White, but William Edward White may have been the first African-American to play in Major League Baseball but he identified as a white person, convinced everyone he was white, and the league saw him as a white person. So it was actually Moses Fleetwood Walker who was the first identified African American to play in Major League Baseball. So in this episode, we're going to replay that game from May 1st, 1884 between the Toledo Blue Stockings and the Louisville Eclipse. <laughs> And here are the starting pitchers and the starting lineups. On the mound for Toledo Blue Stockings is going to be Tony Mullane. He went 36 and 26 with 65 games started. He had a 2.52 ERA. He pitched 567 innings and struck out 325. For Louisville, Guy Hecker is going to be on the mound. He went 52 and 20. He started 73 games. He had a 1.80 ERA, and he pitched 671 games and struck out 385. For the Blue Stockings, they're going to have the second baseman, Barkley, leading off. Porman, the right fielder, is going to be batting second. Miller, the shortstop, is going to be batting third. Fleetwood Walker, the catcher, is going to be batting fourth. Welch, the center fielder, is going to be batting fifth. Mullane, the pitcher, batting sixth. Lane, the first baseman, batting seventh. Brown, the third baseman, batting eighth. And Tilly, the left fielder, will be batting ninth. For Louisville, they're going to have Pete Browning, the third baseman, leading off. Hecker, the pitcher, is going to be batting second. Wolf, the right fielder, batting third. Klein, the center fielder, batting fourth. Latham, the first baseman, is going to be batting fifth. Sullivan, the catcher, is going to be batting sixth. Maskery, the left fielder, batting seventh. McLaughlin, the shortstop, batting eighth. And Gerhardt, the second baseman, is going to be batting ninth. So now, let's go ahead let's jump into the game between the Toledo Blue Stockings and the Louisville Eclipse, which was May 1st, 1884, the very first game that an African American debuted in the major leagues. But before we jump into the game first, I'm going to ask you guys to hit that thumbs up and like the video. I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 200 subscriptions. And lastly, leave any questions, comments, or snide remarks in the comments section down below. And now, let's jump into the May 1st game in 1884 between the Blue Stockings of Toledo and the Eclipse of Louisville. <laughs> All right, so here we are at Eclipse Park 1. It is a good day at the park. We have Hecker, Guy Hecker on the mound. He's going against Barkley, the second baseman who had 306. And here's the first pitch of the game, and Barkley's going to hit a ground ball to Browning. That's going to be one down. Next up is Porman. Porman, the right fielder, hit 233, not a great hitter. And so here's the pitch, and this is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. He's going to have to make a play, and it's going to be a ground ball that's going to get through the gap, and that's going to be a single for Porman. So he's going to be on base early on. And so with one out and Porman on first, here comes Miller. Miller is the shortstop. He had 239. And here's the pitch. He's going to ground ball back to Hecker, who's going to have to make a play. Whoopsie! But he's going to mess up the play, and that's going to be an error as Hecker struggles that one. Porman goes to second. Miller's now on first, and now Walker is up, who at 263. And so he's going to rip a single into left field to Mascre. And Porman, with pretty decent speed, Mascre has a plus one arm. We are going to send him. We are going to hold the trailing runners and let the play come home. And here's the throw. Dave! 
He's going to be safe at home as he beats the throw, so that's going to be an RBI single by Walker. And that's going to give us a quick 1-0 lead. So Fleetwood Walker, the first African-American to ever play in the major leagues, leads off this game with an RBI single. And now Welch is up, the center fielder. He hit 224. And he's going to hit a ground ball to Browning. He's going to throw it to Gerhardt. He's going to throw it over the Latham for a 5-4-3 inning-ending double play. But Moses Fleetwood Walker with an RBI single to give us a quick 1-0 lead. And now Tony Mullane's on the mound. He's going to go against Pete Browning. Pete Browning, the third baseman, their best hitter, hit 336. He had four home runs. The top four hitters for the Louisville Eclipse have some power for the 1880s. And now here's Browning. He's up the bat. He's going to hit a ground ball to Brown at third base. That's going to be one down. And now Guy Hecker, the pitcher's up. He's going to be struck out. So a strikeout by Tony Mullane. And now Wolf is up. He hit 300 with three home runs. And he's going to hit a line ball right at Brown. That's going to be the third out. So that's going to end the inning as we go into the top of the sixth with Tony Mullane, the pitcher, being up the bat. He had 276. He had three home runs. Led the team in home runs that year. And so now here is the pitch by Guy Hecker. And Guy Hecker's going to get Tony Mullane to pop this one out. That's going to be one down. And now Lane is up the first baseman. He's going to hit a ground ball to McLaughlin. McLaughlin is going to have to make a play. Give me that! He makes an amazing diving play to his right, throws it the first, and that's going to be an out as he just beats out Lane at first base. And now Brown, the third baseman, is up. He only hit 176. He's going to pop this one up the third base to Brown, and, and that's going to be the third out as we go into the bottom of the second. Here is Klein, the center fielder. He had 290 with two home runs, and he's going to rip a single as he pulls this one between first and second over the infield. Corman pulls that one in. Throws it to the cutoff man, and Klein is on first with a single to lead off the bottom of the second. He's going to try to get a lead. He does. We're going to try to get him. He's out! And he's going to be thrown out at second base. So a great play there by Walker. Moses Fleetwood Walker throws him out, nails him at second, and that's going to be the first out. And now Latham is up, the first baseman, and he's a 1-10. to 10. He's going to pull an 11. So 1-10 to 10 for a single, it's going to be an 11, so it's going to be a line out to short. Nice. That's going to be the second out. Now Sullivan is up, and Sullivan's going to hit a ground ball to Brown at third base to end the inning. So they get a runner on, but Moses Fleetwood Walker throws him out. And we get a 1-2-3 inning. Top of the third. Here is Tilly, the left fielder. He only hit 179. He's going to hit a ground ball to Browning at third. That's going to be one down. And now top of the order here is Barkley. Barkley is going to hit a little foul ball behind home plate. Seldon able to pull that one in. That's going to be two down. Now Poorman is up. He's one for one. He's going to hit a ground ball back to Guy Hecker. That's going to be the third out. So a one, two, three inning. Now we go into the bottom of the third. Here is Masgray, the left fielder. He had 250. He's going to be struck out. The second strikeout for Tony Mullane. Here's McLaughlin, the shortstop. He's going to be <laughs> hit by a pitch. So he's going to be on base. And now Gerhardt's up. The second baseman hit 220. And they're going to try to steal again. He has a 75% chance, 1 to 15. We're going to throw, see if we can get him. This time, Moses Fleetwood Walker throws not in time as McLaughlin gets a stolen base. He's on second. And now Gerhardt still up the bat, the second baseman, trying to knock in a run with one out. But he's going to be struck out. So the third strikeout for Tony Mullane, two down. Here is the leadoff man, Pete Browning, third baseman, who had 280 with four home runs. He's going to hit a ground ball to Miller. Miller's going to have to make a play, and he will scoop this one up, throw it the first, and that's going to end the inning as they leave a runner stranded in scoring position. So after three, Toledo Blue Stockings leave this one one to nil. They have one run on two hits, have not committed an error. Louisville Eclipse has zero runs. They've gotten one hit, and they have committed an error. Top of the fourth, Guy Hecker back on the mound. Miller is up. He is going to rip one right at shortstop McLaughlin. That's going to be an out, and now Fleetwood Walker's up. He's the one that had that single back in the first to knock in the only run so far. He's going to be up to bat, and he's a 1-10, to 10, and he's going to get a 7. So his second hit of the game, and that's going to put him on first with one down, and now Welch is up. 
Welch ground out into the double play, but this time he's going to be struck out. So two outs in the fourth inning, and now Tony Mullane, the pitcher, is up here at 276 with three home runs. He's going to be struck out. So two strikeouts to end the inning. And we go into the bottom of the fourth guy. Hecker's going to be up the bat. He had 297. The pitcher, one of their best hitters on the team. And he's going to draw a walk to start off the fourth inning. And so he's on base. And now Wolf's up. They're going to try to steal with guy Hecker. Hecker gets a good jump. We're going to throw it. And he's safe. He just beats the throw. As Fleetwood Walker's not able to get the throw there in time. So they're going to have a runner on second with no outs. With their heart of their lineup coming up, here's Wolf, the right fielder, who hit 300 with three home runs. And he's going to be struck out. So a strikeout there. And that's going to put up Klein. And we're going to go intentionally walk him as he is one of their best hitters. And they got Latham coming up. And Latham only hit 169 back in 1884. So here's Latham. He's 0 for 1. He lined out the last time. He's going to ground ball to Barkley a second. Barkley's going to throw at the short. And it worked with the intentional walk. Yes! I am a genius! And that's going to be a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning as we go into the top of the fifth. The seven, eight, and nine hitters are up lane. The first baseman's 0 for 1. He grounded out back in the second inning. He's going to pop this one up to Gerhardt at second. So that's going to be an out. And now Brown is up, the third baseman. He's going to rip a single. He doesn't have a lot of options on his card, but he only had three opportunities for hits. And we got one of them as he's going to get on base. And now Tilly is up. He hit 179. He does better against lefties. But he needs a 1-18 to 18 for a single. It is going to be a 5, so he's able to get on base. Brown has a chance to go to third, but unfortunately we're going to keep him there. There's only a 1-8, to eight, a 40% chance, so we're going to keep him at second. That's going to put runners on first and second for Barkley, our leadoff man. The second baseman at 306 had the highest average on the team, and he is going to hit a ground ball to McLaughlin. McLaughlin has good range but does not have a good glove. Whoopsies. He's going to juggle this one, cannot pick it up. That's going to load up the bases as Barkley gets on base on the second air by the Louisville Eclipse. And Poorman's up. He's one for two. He did have a single back in the, in the first. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. The Wolf, this one's pretty deep. It's not going to be deep enough as, unfortunately, it's too shallow. And with Brown being pretty slow, is not able to tag up and come home. So that's going to be bases loaded with two down. And now Miller, the shortstop's up. He had 239. He's going to pop this one out the second to end the inning. As we leave three runners on base. Stupid idiot. Here is the bottom of the fifth. Sullivan's up. He had 239 to catch her. And he's going to pop this one up to Lane, who doesn't have to move very far. And that's going to be one down. And now Maskery's up. He's 0 for 1. He's going to draw a walk. So he's on base. And now McLaughlin's up. They're going to try to get a lead. They cannot. So McLaughlin is going to hit with Mastery on first base. And it's going to be a wild pitch. So Mastery, who was trying to get a good lead, still takes second. This time on Mullane's wild pitch, his first one of the game. And McLaughlin now up the bat. They're going to try to get another lead. They cannot. So here's the pitch against McLaughlin. He's going to hit a ball into opposite field to Porman. Porman's going to be able to pull this one in. And he has a good arm. It's shallow enough, so Mastery's not going to test it. And that's going to leave him at second. And now Gerhardt, the number nine hitter, is up. He hit 220. The second baseman is going to hit a ground ball to Brown at third. And that's going to end the inning as, again, Louisville gets a runner in scoring position but leaves him stranded as we go into the top of the six. And Moses Fleetwood Walker's up, the catcher, who at 263 has two singles in this game. And so here's the pitch, and he's going to get his third hit of the game. As he is able to continue to get on base, we're going to try to see if he can get a steal here. He is not able to get it. He almost gets picked off. But he does get back to the bag in time. So here's Welch the center fielder, and we were thinking about bunting, but we're not. Just a bit outside. But it's going to be a wild pitch as this one goes in the dirt, gets by Sullivan. And so that is a wild pitch against Hecker, and Walker now is on second. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to try to bunt. And so we're going to lay down a bunt, and he does it very, very well. Browning comes in, charges this one, throws it out at first base to 
get out Welch. But Walker now is on third with one out. Mullane, our best hitter, is up. And he is going to draw a walk. So he's on first. We have runners on the corner. Lane is up. He had 228, the first baseman. And a passed ball. This one goes through Sullivan as he's not able to catch that one. And that's going to bring in Walker. And now Mullane is on second as we get our second run as Hecker had a wild pitch and a passed ball on Sullivan. So the pitcher-catcher combination starting to fail Louisville in the sixth inning as we got Lane now up with a runner still in scoring position. He's going to ground ball to McLaughlin. McLaughlin is going to have to make the play. We can send Mullane. We're going to do it. It's a 55% chance. They are going to take the easy out at first. So there's going to be two down, and they're going to let Mullane on to third. So here's Brown, the third baseman. He is one for two today. He's going to hit a fly ball as he pulls this one into left field to Masquerade. That's going to end the inning, but we do add another run and double our lead as we go into the bottom of the six. Here's Browning to eclipse his best hitter. He's 0 for 2 today. He's going to hit a fly ball to Welch in center field. Welch has got very good range. He's a two, and he's able to pull this one in, so that's going to be one down. And now Hecker, the pitcher, is up. He's 0 for 1 with a walk, and he's going to be struck out. So the fifth strikeout for Tony Mullane in this game, and now Wolf is up. Wolf is 0 for 2, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Brown, who does not have good range. And he, unfortunately, is not able to get there in time. He throws it. The throw was late. It would be counted as a single, but the throw was also wild. And so Wolf is able to get a single and then advances to second on the throwing air. You're killing me, Smalls! So Klein now is up the bat, and again, Louisville with a runner at second base in scoring position. He's going to hit a fly ball to Welch, who has to make a play. Welch is charging in. He's going to have to make this one, and he will get there in time. Impressive! As he pulls this one in, so at the end of six innings, Toledo Blue Stockings lead this one. 2-0 as Toledo has two runs, six hits, has made one error. Louisville has zero runs. They've only gotten two hits, and they've made two critical errors so far in this game. Top of the seventh, Guy Hecker back on the mound. Tilly is up. He is our number nine hitter. He's going to hit a fly ball into left field to Mascari. That's going to be a routine out, so there's one down, and now Barkley, our leadoff man's up. He's 0 for 3. He did get on base in the fifth on an error. This time he's going to hit a fly ball to right field to Wolf. Wolf's going to have to make a player. And Wolf drops this one. So Barkley gets to second base the same time he's gotten on base on an air. So that'll be the third air against Louisville. The fun of playing with these 19th century teams is every hit that goes to the fielder's cards could definitely be a single or an air as their defense was absolutely horrendous. So we got Poorman now up. He only hit 233. Right fielder, he is one for three, though, today. He's going to hit a fly ball into left field. It's toward the gap. Mastery has horrible range, and he is not able to get there. He's going to go all the way to the fence, and he's going to miss throw to the cutoff man. He misses the cutoff man, and that is going to allow Poorman to get a triple and then score on the throwing air. Still missing the cutoff man. Now that, that, that's something that I would like you to work on before next season. That is going to allow Barkley to score, Poorman scores, and that's going to be two more runs in the seventh inning as we only have one out. And now Miller's up, and that's going to be a strikeout. And that's going to bring up Moses Fleetwood Walker, the first African-American to ever play in the major leagues. He is 3-for-3 three three today with three singles. He has an RBI. He has scored. He has done more than his share, but this time he's going to be strikeout. So that's going to be a strikeout, and that's going to end the top of the seventh. But we add two more runs, and we lead this one 4-0. And now Latham's up. The number five hitter, the first baseman, hit only 169. He's over for 2 today. He's going to hit a line ball right at Miller. Miller doesn't have to move. That's going to be one down. And now Sullivan's up. The catcher, he's going to hit a fly ball to Welch in center field, who's had to make several plays. Welch is running back toward the wall. He's not able to get it. It's going to bounce off the wall. Welch gets it, throws it in, and Sullivan is going to be at second base with a stand-up double. And again, Louisville has a runner on second base in scoring position. Masquerie's up, the left fielder. He needs a 1-7 to seven for a single. He's going to be a 13. So Miller able to jump up, get that one, and that's going to keep Sullivan at second base. So two down. Here's McLaughlin, who's 0 for 1. Did get on base with a hit by pitch. He needs a 1-10 to 10 for a single. It's going to be a 19, so it's going to be a line out to short right at Miller. And that's going to be the end of the inning as we go into the top of the eighth. Here's Welch, our center fielder. He had 224. 
He needs a 1 to 19. It's going to be a 12, so that's going to be a single right up the middle. He's on base, and now Tony Mullane, our best hitter, is up. The pitcher is 0 for 2. He did get on base with a walk. Can he help us out here? But no, he's going to be struck out for the second time today. And Guy Hecker has five strikeouts in this game. And now Lane is up. Lane's going to hit a fly ball as he pulls this one in the left field. Mastery has to move a little bit to his left, but he's able to pull that one in easily. That's going to be two down. And now here's Brown. Brown is going to pop this one up kind of high, but not that high. Gerhardt barely has to move to the back of the infield. He pulls that one in for the third out. And that's going to end the top of the eighth. Here we go. Bottom of the eighth. Mullane still on the mound. He's doing good when it comes to his fatigue. He's going against Gerhardt, the number nine hitter, the second baseman. 0 for 2 today. He's going to be 0 for 3 as he lifts one up in the left field to Tilly. And Tilly's able to pull that one, and that's going to be an out. And here's Browning, their best hitter, who had 336, one of the best hitters in the year. But he is 0 for 3 in this game today. Not able to get on base, but he is going to show why he's one of the best hitters as he hits one in the left center into the gap. Browning, with good speed, is able to get all the way to third base. And that's going to be a triple with one down. And now Guy Hecker, the pitcher's up. He had 297 with four home runs. And he is going to lift one into right field. Poorman is back. It's pretty deep. And it's going to be deep enough as Browning's able to tag up and score. And finally, Louisville is on the board with a run. But they trail 4-1 to one with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. And Wolf, this right fielder, is up. Wolf needs a 1 to 14 for a double. It's going to be a 20, so it's going to be a single. So the 20 die is in our favor on that one. And now Klein is up, who's 1 for 2. He has been on base on an intentional walk as well. And he needs a 1 to 13, and it's going to be a 1. So he's able to get on base. They are sending Wolf to third. We're not going to test this. We're going to keep Klein at first as the tying run now comes up to bat in the bottom of the eighth with two down. Latham, who's 0 for 3 today, the first baseman. And they are going to steal. We are going to give him the stolen base. Not going to risk it. Let him get on second. So he does get the second regardless. Klein gets the stolen base. Walker does not throw it. And so now Tony Mullane goes against Latham. The first baseman, again, who hit 169. He's going to rip a single to opposite field. Poorman's going to get this one. Wolf scores easily. They're waving Klein home. We're going to throw it home. And he is able to Beat the throw as now they have gotten three runs in the bottom of the eighth. You're gonna lose. You stink. You're gonna lose. Mullane, who has done an amazing job, has suddenly starting to fall apart here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the tying run is on first. And Sullivan, the leading run, is at bat as a two-out rally for Louisville is keeping them alive. Sullivan hit 239. He is one for three at a double back in the seventh. And he's going to rip a single. They're going to send Latham the third. We can throw it to him or we can keep Sullivan at first. We are going to keep Sullivan at first. And we are going to take a moment to see if we want to bring in a relief pitcher as Mullane is falling apart in this inning. So we are making a pitching move as we're going to bring in Charlie Morton. Morton only pitched about 23 innings back in 1884, but we did take Tony Mullane, move him into the left field for Lilly, and so that's going to allow him and his bat to stay in the game, and so that's going to bring up Maskery with runners on the corners, Morton with two down, bottom of the eighth, Morton trying to get Toledo out of this one, and here is Maskery, and they are going to bring in Andrews, Wally Andrews, to pinch run. He is obviously good speed. He's going to be running, and we are going to hold on to the ball as Morton has a plus four hold. So Andrew's able to get easily to that one. We had no chance of throwing him out. And that's now putting the leading run at second base with two down. Here's Maskery, 0 for 2 with a walk. He's going to hit a ground ball to Miller. Miller's going to have to make a play. Whoopsies. Miller drops this one he cannot pick this one up and so that is going to score the tying run and Andrews goes to third as Mastery gets on base with an air and now McLaughlin's up they are going to get McLaughlin to hit a ground ball back to Morton that is going to end the inning finally but Louisville ties this one up with four runs as Toledo fell apart defensively as well as their pitching. And we now have a brand new ball game, a game that was completely in control on our end. But now we're going to be going into the top of the ninth. Morton, the pitcher who came in, is up to bat. He only hit 162 back in 
1884, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Browning. That's going to be one down, and now Barkley, the leadoff man, is up. He's 0 for 4 today. He didn't go on base twice with an air, but he this time he's going to fly ball to Andrews, who has horrible range, but this one's right at him, so that's going to be two down. And now Porman, who's 2 for 4, is up. He's going to hit a line ball right at Gerhardt. That's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. As we go into the bottom of the ninth, Louisville having all the momentum right now. They got Gerhardt, the number nine hitter, the second baseman's up, and he's going to be struck out. So a strikeout to start off the bottom of the ninth, and now Browning's up, who was 0 for 3, but got a triple to start off that major rally, or was part of that major rally, and he's going to need a 1-6 to six for a double. It's going to be a 15, but it will be good enough for singles. It's up the middle, and he's going to stay there. And unfortunately now... We are in a pickle because Morton has a horrible range. We are going to see about maybe bringing Tony Malone back to the mound. So a very unconventional move here as we're going to take Morton, put him into left field, bring Malone back to the mound to see if he can help us here as he has a minus one hold. Browning has incredible speed, one of the fastest guys in 1884. He's probably going to try to get a lead here, will he? And he is running. We're going to throw it. Walker is going to throw it. Sloppy. But unfortunately, he overthrows the man at second base, and Browning is able to go to third as we commit another error. So Guy Hecker is up. We are going to have to walk him and hope that we can get a double play here with one out. Browning on third base, Hacker on first. Here's Wolf. He's two for four. He lined out, struck out, and he's gotten two singles. His last two at-bats, one in the sixth and one in the eighth. Bottom of the ninth, one down. Game is tied. Here's Wolf. Wolf is going to hit a fly ball to left field. Morton is going to be charging this one. He has a minus one arm. Browning is tagging up. We're going to have to throw it. It's a one to 18 for him to be there. Damn and he is going to score as he beats the throw. Disappointed! Oh my goodness. We jumped up early and took a huge 4 to nil lead, but in the bottom of the eighth, Louisville comes back after horrible defense and pitching. They end up tying it, and then in the ninth inning, they end up winning this one. <laughs> There you go, another original. This time it was the very first time that a self-identified and recognized African-American played in the Major League, and that happened on May 1st, 1884, when Moses Fleetwood Walker debuted for the Toledo Blue Stockings when they took on the Louisville Eclipse. Louisville Eclipse originally won this one, and just like they had, they ended up winning this one in our replay. Louisville came back from a 4 to nothing deficit in the eighth inning, they got a two-out rally. Toledo fell apart with bad pitching, horrible defense, and Louisville ended up tying it and then winning it in the ninth inning. Even though Moses Fleetwood Walker had an incredible game, he had a bunch of hits, he threw out runners at second base trying to steal. Unfortunately, it was an error that cost us the game as he overthrew when Pete Browning was trying to steal second, and that allowed him to advance to third, putting him in prime position, and then he eventually scored on a sacrifice fly. But it was still fun to be able to do another game of these originals. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you haven't checked out some of these other games, please feel free to check out the playlist that I have on my channel. So until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one. Bye.